one of the most common types of satellites, if not the most common type of satellite, is communication satellites. There are a number of different things that these can be used for and different applications that they have. There are basically three types of categories that I tend to to group them into. There are ones such as this. This is a uh, next generation Iridium constellation satellite. This satellite has a number of antennas. See, each one of these is an individual antenna. And they can each track a Iridium phone on the ground, or one or more. And they're able to relay the signal back up to the satellite that can relay to a ground station. You can see there are a number of other antennas. I believe this one is used to communicate with the ground to send the signal back. And these two sets are used to send the, the signal to the, uh, the satellite in front and behind it. This is a Orbcom OG2 satellite, and it is very similar, although it only has one giant antenna that's used to both communicate with the ground and their payloads and other things. Well, the main difference between the two is Orbcom uses a much lower uh, data capacity, so they're able to do it with just one antenna where it takes many more for the higher bandwidth required by Iridium satellites. This is a O3B satellite that's being prepared to launch. O3B stands for other 3 billion. This is an internet satellite. And it's a little bit difficult to see, but there are a number of different satellite or antenna dishes here. What this satellite does, it's a medium Earth orbit satellite. It will point one of these individual antennas at an area of interest, maybe a cruise ship or a uh, small town or something like that, and it can broadcast the internet to those particular locations. That allows, there are a limit to the number of dishes that can have, so you can only send the signal to a certain number of places, but it improves the bandwidth. And as this is a medium Earth orbiting satellite, it still has a fair distance to the ground, so you need a, a fairly high communication link, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Uh, the last one is geostationary satellites. Uh, this is a orbital design. Each one of these dishes can receive and, or transmit signals back. I believe the smaller ones are probably the receiving ones. The larger ones are probably transmitting back. It's hard to really say, though. They probably some mixture of the two. What the way that these tend to work is they tend to rebroadcast a large band of signals. So you'll send a signal from the ground, and that will be received by the satellite and just retransmitted. They're not really doing anything particularly uh, smart. They're just a, a repeater of a signal. So then you can transmit the signal from the ground to effectively the entire globe. And that's the way most geocommunication satellites work, although there are some that operate on other principles, but this is for like television. So one of the important things is the inverse squared law, meaning the further distance you are, the your, more your power drops off, and it drops off by a factor, a squared factor of the distance. So a low Earth orbiting communication satellite might be seven, eight hundred kilometers above you, and it could be to the side several thousand kilometers away, but it's going to be within a couple thousand kilometers of where you are. So not a significant amount of difference, and there's a relatively good amount of, of gain with that. If you get to geostationary orbit, the distance increases dramatically, and therefore the power decreases dramatically. So it's much more difficult to communicate with those satellites, and so you have to increase the power or, and or gain. So you notice that the, the higher satellites, the geostationary satellites, had more gain in the medium ones than the, the lower ones that uh, the were communicating with the ground. And the Orbcom had a even lower because it was just one big giant antenna that was used to cover the entire system. So 
there are a couple of different things that you need to do to test these communication silos. This is called a an EMI chamber. These different cones, they help to absorb the radio signals that are coming around, and it will allow you to test to see how the satellite interacts with itself. When you're in space, nothing will... There's nothing else out there to receive except for your signals from the ground and signals that your own spacecraft generates. Now, every electronics generates some kind of a frequency, and if you just happen to have the wrong frequency that shows up in your receive band, you might not be able to receive the very small signal that's coming from the ground. And so therefore it's important to test these on the ground to make sure that we don't have any issues. This is a, a example of a satellite bus. And most satellite buses are built to be resistant to EMI. So most of the electronics are inside the main bus compartment of the satellite. Everything that can be is. And these, these signals, they tend to absorb RF energy. So that way you don't have it transmitted into your antenna, it'll be greatly reduced. Your radio equipment, of course, you RF shield even more to protect it, and you might even isolate it from the, the bus components. And this is what you have to do in order to test it. There are a few things that cannot be put inside of the, the Faraday cage of the satellite, such as maybe a magnetometer or something like that, and for those, you have to take extra special precautions in order to make sure you're not transmitting a signal that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. So that's all I have for this time. Uh, let me know whatever questions you guys have about communication satellites in general. There are a lot of varieties, and pretty much every satellite, even if it doesn't have a transmission of, of a customer-type signal from the ground, then it will at least have to receive the signals from the ground. So they'll have a lot of similarities no matter what type of satellite that you're building. So it's important to test all of this kind of stuff out as much as you can to make sure you're able to communicate with the satellite and that it's effective. If you don't do this testing, you run the risk of not having as effective of a satellite as you might be able to otherwise. Anyways, let me know whatever questions you guys have, and thank you very much for joining me. For now, keep on tracking, and I will see you next time.